Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Today is a, the third Sunday of the blessed month of Misra. And this is the last Coptic, this is the last full Coptic month of the year where we, we see different themes come out. Um, we speak about end times. We think about the second coming. We talk about preparing ourselves with a new life in Christ. And today we see this theme of this battle for the soul. And we see the spiritual warfare uh, come manifest. And so before we get to that, the gospel today talks a little bit about division. And so I want to ask a question. You don't have to answer it. But how many of us truly want Christ to live in us, to know that God is always in us, dwelling in us? That should be the goal of the Christian life. Isn't that the good news that we try to proclaim each and every week that God wants to live in each one of us and he wants us to live in him? Our fundamental and central goal of life as Christians is not only to discover God, not only to believe in him, but primarily it is to be united with God, to become one with him to live in union with him each and every day. And this beautiful union grows in its depth and its love. The more that we open our hearts to receive him, the more that we allow Christ to live freely in our lives. Remember that we are finite beings, and these finite beings are trying to connect with an infinite God. And so our journey our Christian journey into God's boundless love is a never-ending journey. This is what St. Paul was trying to communicate in his letter to the Galatians in chapter 2. He said, It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. This should be our ultimate goal as Orthodox Christians, to have Christ living in each one of us. Here comes the challenge, and it's illustrated in today's gospel. In order for Christ to come and to dwell in us, we have to make space for him. In our, we have to make space for him in our daily life, not just on Sundays. We can't fill our minds and our hearts every single day with the cares and the desires and the passions of this world, and then we expect Christ to be one of our many interests. Our faith cannot simply be one of our many passions. If we honestly take a look at ourselves, many of us, I'm talking about myself, many of us treat Christ and our Orthodox Christian faith as something that we claim to be important. Maybe some of us would claim it's on our top 10. But truth be told, if we're really taking stock of that list, I don't know where God is placed on that list. Unfortunately, we live with division in our hearts. We live with division in our hearts. How do we assess this? How do we see this? Well, we begin to look at how we value what we have in life. How is it that we prioritize our time? How is it that we prioritize our efforts, our finances, our passions in our everyday lives? This is the big challenge. The Bible describes God as a jealous God. He makes it very clear what he expects from his people and how he wants us to prioritize him above all else. Remember, when our Lord bluntly told his followers, if anyone loves father or mother more than me, you are not worthy of me. And if you love son or daughter more than me, you are not worthy of me. This is an extremely hard teaching. This is very difficult for us to take to heart. Christ warns us 
that no matter how wonderful our families may be, no matter how much we love them, if we love them more than Christ, we are not worthy of Christ. If we place our family as our first priority, we are not giving God his proper place in our lives. Let me give you another difficult example. St. Paul, when he writes to the Christians in Rome, he says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind that you may prove what is that is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. What a great challenge for us to hear. It's an amazing challenge. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the will of God. The world tempts us, tempts us daily, multiple times a day, with dreams of what is rich and what is fun and what is cool. Society tempts us with an impression of happiness. And this happiness comes from material beauty, temporary pleasures. Every day, social media and all the internet marketing make us feel that we need to have whatever it is that they offer. We need to have it. Because only then we will look good, we will feel good, we will be happy if we just have that thing. Being conformed to this world deceives us. It allows our passions to become idolatry. Being conformed to this world deceives us into thinking that Maybe our political passions will answer the world's problems. There are many temptations that try to fill our hearts and our lives, temptations that often make ridiculous promises of happiness and contentment and meaning. And yet, as St. Augustine once said, our heart will remain restless until it rests in God. Our heart will remain restless until it rests in God. God knows this, and this is why he wants to dwell at the center of our lives for our own good. That's why there cannot be division in our hearts. In the gospel today, our Lord said, if a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house cannot stand. Only he will fill our hearts and our lives with ultimate and eternal meaning and contentment. Only he. Christ wants to live and to dwell in each one of us. And if he does, his peace and his love and his joy will overflow in our hearts. Yet, we have to make space for him. It doesn't come passively. We have to prioritize him in our lives. We have to make uncomfortable choices. Our Lord reminds us in Revelations chapter 3, verse 20, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and dine with him and he with me. We have to put ourselves in a position where we can hear his voice. And then we open the door and invite him in and we clear out the space in our hearts. There is no division. We have to make room for him in our lives. Not allowing our passions, our desires, our egocentric desires to fill up that space in our hearts and to cause division. Today, the gospel passage started off with uh, our Lord casting out a demon. We have to ask ourselves tough questions. Are we afraid to confront our demons? Are we too comfortable with whatever demons, whatever passions, whatever addictions are embedded in our lives? Are we just comfortable? Are we afraid? Think about some of the demons that we all let accommodate our lives. The demon of anger, the demon of bitterness, towards certain people. Sometimes we justify it. It's okay. The demon of hatred that comes 
oftentimes out of our ignorance and an unwillingness or a stubbornness to learn and to grow. The demons of our arrogance and our pride, and it, this reveals counsel, countless ways. Maybe the demon of unforgiveness, not forgiving someone or, or for whatever hurt they have done to us. Instead, we hold on to a stubborn grudge, and it's a stubborn grudge. We're being stubborn. The demon of greed and a desire for, for more, for more money, for more possessions, I'm never satisfied. Maybe it's a demon of lust that, that really just flaunts itself throughout our society, destroying marriages, destroying homes, destroying the hearts of countless people. Maybe we're just really comfortable with these demons. Or maybe we're just afraid and we feel like they have too much power against us. There are many, there are, there are many ways that demons attack us and try to keep us in bondage. And the question that I have today is whether or not we want to confront these demons in our lives. It's a question. It's not assumed. Will we invite Christ and his church to help us overcome and cast them out? Remember when our Lord met the man who was paralyzed for 38 years? It wasn't assumed. He said, do you want to be made well? And this is a similar question that we have to have for each one of us, especially as we wrap up this Coptic year. Do we want to be made well? Do we want to address whatever demon that we have within, do we want to be made well? Will we accept Christ to stay with us and to set us free? This is the good news of our faith. The good news of who we are and what we are. The good news about the divine love that lives within us. No demons, whether in the form of evil vices or bad habits or obsessions or addictions. Those things cannot change the essence of who we are. Who are we? We are beloved children created in the image of God. We are his sons and daughters. We are royalty. Sometimes we give too much power to these things, to these demons in our lives. And it's when we reclaim who we are, who is our Heavenly Father watching over us, dwelling within us, then we can unleash the strength needed to live out our original identity. We can defeat these things that are wrestling for our souls, living in our hearts. Think about these amazing promises in Scripture. Sometimes our prayers are misguided. This is why it's good to talk to a father confession. Sometimes we feel like that's only for the youth. And then when I get married or I reach a certain point in my life, or no, my, my is in the church that's like five hours away. What am I supposed to do? Then make a change. It's not working. It's not working, right? We have to make a change. Look at the promises because sometimes we pray for things and we don't even realize the promises that are already there. Christ already said it. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Like these are not sayings that we put in a nice font and we decorate our houses with and or nice mugs and things. No, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It's an amazing promise. In Christ, I have overcome the world. If anyone is in Christ, we are a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Our Lord said, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, who is, who was, who is to come, the Lord Almighty. This Almighty Lord, this Lord of all creation, including the Lord of our lives. Nothing, no demon, no influence, no legion of demons can stand in his way. 
When we allow Christ to truly live in us, we discover a power greater than anything, anything. These things that seem so overwhelming are nothing. Christ, the Almighty One, is ready to cast out whatever, whatever is assailing us, whatever it is. Go to your priest. Go to a priest. Get absolved. Take care of your confession. Don't harbor these things in your heart. Don't allow division to be in your heart. Even those things that we think are so ingrained. How can I say this in front of Abuna? What will he think of me? No, Christ calls them out and he gives us new life. He gives us new life. Listen to the encouraging words of St. Paul to his disciple, St. Timothy. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. Each one of us can access this power of God within our own lives and begin a process of healing and renewal. Demons in whatever form no longer need to control our lives. This is the point of us really reflecting on these moments at the end of the Coptic year. This is the essence of the good news, a promise to liberate us from all things that divide us. I pray that we find the courage to ask Christ to stay with us and that there's no division. We ask Christ to stay with us and open our hearts and our minds to free us from all the demons that try to divide us. In summary, the gospel today should inspire us to ask difficult questions. How do we respond to our Lord Jesus Christ and his authority and his power in our lives? Do we obey him? Will we obey him? Will we welcome him and invite him to confront the demons in our own lives and allow him to deliver, them, to deliver us from their power? Or do we say, leave us alone. Leave us alone. Don't interfere in my life. I like the way I am. I like this division. I like my possessions. I like my money. I like this anger. I like this bitterness, this resentment that I have. They deserve it. God respects our freedom. We have choices to make. And one of the most important choices is how do we respond to our Lord's power and authority? Do we want the source of life, the fountain of love, God Almighty to live in us. We have to learn to deny ourselves. We have to learn to make space for him. We have to learn to prioritize him first in our lives. First. There is no exception to that. He is knocking. He is waiting for us to open up. I pray that we open up the door of our hearts and welcome Christ to take, that, to take that first place, the place of honor, the place of priority in our lives. May our Lord provide us with his blessings and his power and his grace so that we can overcome the evil, the one who divides. And glory be to God forever. Amen. Saying, Blessed are.